What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and as you can see laid out here uh, I wanted to revisit uh, holsters and mag pouches due to some of the recent changes that have happened uh, in the past couple of years here in South Carolina as well as some of the other places across the United States. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey! Welcome back, everybody. Like I said, we're going to be talking again about holsters and also mag pouches. And I wanted to revisit this because a couple of years ago, uh, South Carolina passed. Uh, what they call open carry with training meaning once you have your permit you can now conceal carry or open carry in the state of south carolina again that's only with the permit we're not like north carolina that's open carry state um, georgia has recently passed constitutional carry and some other uh, some other states have also passed constitutional carry or permitless carry to some people say it different and also open carry so i wanted to go back over holsters because I have seen some crazy stuff going on out there. Uh, matter of fact, I was just in the grocery store the other day. Gentleman was open carrying and had a single retention holster. So I was just a little curious how close I could get to him and I got close enough to where I could have grabbed his gun from him. So not only do you need the right holster, you need to be aware of your surroundings, especially when you're open carrying. So I'm going to start at the top and we're going to go over the differences between inside the waistband and outside the waistband. And sometimes you might see it abbreviated IWB or OWB. So inside the waistband, outside the waistband. And for any newcomers to the page or to firearms, inside the waistband means it's in between your body and the waistband of your pants. If you are going to carry that way, I recommend having a couple of pairs of pants and or shorts it's one size bigger than what you normally wear so you have a little bit of room to work with if not inside the waistband can get a little uncomfortable no matter what kind of holster you have um, or if there's like a little bit of elastic in the waistband where you have some room to play that's also fine as well so a lot of your especially tactical pants um, or nice khaki pants from some of your tactical companies like 511 proper and all these other places uh, LA what is it, LA Police Gear, or LA Gear, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's tons of them out there. They usually they'll have a little bit of elastic inside the waistband because they know people are probably going to be carrying possibly inside the waistband. So you have that out there. Um, and then outside the waistband, of course, is outside the waistband. So, and I've got so some of the different holsters here as far as inside and outside. The other thing is you have three different levels of retention with your holsters. Of course, you have single retention, double retention, triple retention. My recommendation, again, if you're going to open carry, I would carry with double retention. At least double retention. If you want to carry with triple retention, that's fine. But I will tell you there's a little bit of a learning curve there if you've never used a triple retention holster. All right, so... What I mean by single retention is on this particular holster here. This is your retention screw. That is single retention. That's the only thing that would hold the gun in. All right, double retention is now my retention screw. And I flip the hood up. And the hood would go over the back of the gun where somebody couldn't pull it out of the holster. So that's what I mean by double retention. Okay, now there's other single retention that we're going to talk about here shortly that I've seen some people carry. I'm not a fan of it, but it's better than just having a retention screw. Um, and we'll talk about that shortly. Now, your triple retention is going to be your retention screw with your hood. And then right here, you know it's kind of hard to see, right on the inside, in between the holster and the hood, there'd be another lever you would press. So what you would do is you come in and clear your hood and then roll right on top of that other lever to be able to unholster the gun and that's your triple retention now most of it your triple stuff is going to be law enforcement and that also depends on the law enforcement agency some are fine with just double retention some will make them use triple retention but if you're going to open carry i don't care what state you're in i would recommend 
having double retention. Please do not be open carrying your gun out in public with a single retention holster. Because the wrong person can come up and grab it, especially if you're not paying attention. So, pay attention to your surroundings, situational awareness, and have the right holster if you're going to open carry. Uh, this is from G Code. Um, their hood you clear with this little lever right here, so you just push that lever down and it'll clear the hood for you. Some of the others that have hoods, you actually manually push the hood out of the way to unholster the gun. So there are some different options. All right, also with G-Code, they use what's called an RTI attachment. So you'll see some of the holsters I'm going to be talking about have this particular attachment. So I'm not having to change the whole piece. I just unlatch it, pop the holster off, put another holster in there for what particular gun I'm going to be using. So usually when I order holsters, they have the RTI attachment on it because I use a lot of G-Code attachments. Uh, there's others out there. Um, you use whatever you want to use. Uh, Safari Land, Blade Tech, all kind of stuff out there. I like the RTI and stuff from G-Code. Um, but even for some guns, G-Code doesn't make holsters for it, so I have to go do other companies. And I always make sure they do the RTI attachments here. Uh, you can buy them from that company with it already on it or just buy the holster and then get the attachment from G-Code, however you want to do it. But that's why you'll see some holsters having this particular attachment on it because they are holsters I use. But that's your inside the waistband, outside the waistband, single, double, triple retention. Uh, some other things with your holsters is, I'm going to talk about this one. This is a black point. I enjoyed this holster when I got it. It's To me, it still is a good holster. The only downside, you see it's got these leather wings on it. So when you hear somebody say wings, they're talking about where your belt is going to go through, where your belt loops are. So right here, these are your wings. That's why you actually see them like wings. I'm not a fan of the leather. What happens is after this stuff wears, no matter how tight I make my belt, my gun will still sit off of my body in an angle and it makes it print a little bit more. Now, that's not illegal, but again, it's not allowing me to really conceal like I would like to. So if you're going to get something like this with wings, make sure you get, this is from 77 Solutions. This is a great holster. I got it from my Hellcat because uh, by the time when I got it, it was brand new. He was the only one really making holsters. So as you can see, these, this is all Kydex. These don't wear out. This Kydex doesn't wear out. So if you're going to get some, and it's contoured, so it goes with the curve of my body. All right, it's not anything that I have to heat it and mold it or anything that's already contoured for me. But if you're going to get something with wings, make sure it's all Kydex. All right, there are companies out there that make all leather holsters. Um, Galco is one company I used. I carried a Glock 19, and I think it was their Summer Line or Summertime Series holsters really comfortable all right I don't have that holster anymore uh, I'm beginning to think I probably lost it because I just can't find it uh, I'm sure it's somewhere in the mix in all of my mess I just really haven't looked for it because it's not one that I'm using that that much anymore all right but make sure you get all kydex wings don't get anything leather and kydex especially where it's leather wings because like I said they they do wear out all right, now the holster that I was talking about is a lot of people call them Serpa holsters. So it's got this little button right here. So what you do is you push that button to release the gun. That's single retention, okay? But you have to push that button to release the gun. Now look where the button is in comparison to my finger. So we have seen a lot of NDs with this particular holster because people come off pressing and keep pressing as they drag up and get right in on the trigger. So I am not a fan of these holsters. Uh, this one is an outside the waistband. It just slides inside the waistband. Where's the... I had another one here. Where'd it go? Maybe I didn't. Maybe this was the only one. I thought I had another. But, oh well. This is not something I am a fan of that's what you want I'm only making recommendations here you get what you want you carry how you want just be smart with your carry if you are going to carry single retention something like this 
or like the leather holsters that have the little strap that comes over the back of it and snaps. All right, so a lot of your police detectives wear those. That's not bad, but still a good yang from that is probably going to come out. All right, so not a big fan of this. The other one, all right, has got the button in the back here. So now you're coming in and grabbing and having to essentially press with almost like the knuckle of your thumb. This was, this had some good reviews, um, but after I got it, and it's a Safari Land, so I was kind of surprised at how it functioned. I'm not a fan of this thing. All right, you got to get this thing depressed just right or it's not going to work for you it's not going to come out and i just fought with it too much and finally got aggravated um, and went and got something else now i'm sure with a little more practice maybe i could have got a little better with it but just not my cup of tea and then you've noticed this right here is just all flat and then you've got some like this here all right and then you've got this here. So what I'm talking about is this back piece back here that's sticking up on these two. Those are your sweat guards. This one has no sweat guard. This one has what's called a high sweat guard. This is called a medium sweat guard. And some of the companies call them different things depending on how big you want. Uh, this had good reviews as well too, but once I got it, this just dug every time I wanted to lean over or if I sat down or if I leaned to my right side this dug into me horribly horribly so i would not me especially if you're a bigger guy i wouldn't recommend a high rise uh, sweat guard if anything get a medium sweat guard this one doesn't dig or anything like that i can lean to the side bend over and it does just fine so there's your sweat guards and stuff um, and then you've got your inside the waistband that has a little uh, sweat guard on it so it just depends. If you can go with a sweat guard, you can go without a sweat guard. It's totally up to you. All right. But I mean, it just depends on what you're wearing. I wear an undershirt, so I'm not too much worried about sweat guards and everything. If there happens to be one on there when I buy it, I just don't want this big, huge, high sweat guard like this right here. Uh, some others. This was. It covers the trigger and everything. It's a very minimal holster. Just wasn't comfortable for me. Again, the reviews on it were really good, uh, but for me, it just it was not comfortable. Now we're going to get into you've even so if you have flashlights, you can get holsters where they've got flashlights. As you can see, this has got an RTI attachment to it. It's one of the ones I use for one of the guns I have a flashlight on. All right, so that's pretty much where your retention is. There's my retention screws. Your retention is around the flashlight, so you can get them. If you have a flashlight on your gun, if you come to anything like this, if I can sit here and fan myself with your holster, this is not a good holster. I will tell you right now, if you show up to my class with something like one of these two, no. Hell to the no, you ain't going to continue. That's why I keep some extra holsters around for common guns so people can use them because this is not going to cut it. I, this one I might let you get away with just because it's got this little strap. It is a little more durable. I can't sit here and fan my... I mean, look how... And I can ball it up. Now, I can't ball this thing up. So this has a little bit more rigidity to it, a little bit more durable. But still, these... If you're using them, say, to put in your glove box or your console or something just to have it in in your home, that's fine. But this is not something I am going to allow you to train with. You will not go out onto my range like this, and I will tell you a lot of the other instructors out there are the same way. They will not allow you on the range with crappy holsters. It can get very unsafe. So, make sure you have good holsters. That's why I wanted to revisit this. This, again, yeah, there it is, right there. It just flipped around. There's another Serpa. So you've actually got double retention. So you've got this and you've got the strap that goes across. This is kind of what I was talking about here with this strap. Okay, not something I want to use. It came with one of the guns I got, something to get you started, but I'm not going to continue using this thing. That's why it's sitting off over here on holsters that aren't that good. This is not a bad holster to train with. All right, this is another attachment. Okay, you unlock it. 
push the button or did I lock it? I locked it. Unlock it, push it up, then it opens up. All right, your little piece here. So it'll come out, pops right out, and you can change it depending on the width of your belt. Goes back over, clicks in, lock it back so it doesn't pop open. This is not a bad holster to use when you're training or anything like that. Even if you're going to carry, you could carry. All right, I don't recommend open carry with this. Try to carry concealed. Um, again, if you're going to open carry, please have double retention. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, I think that's pretty much all the holsters down here. I just wanted to kind of have some out as an example. Some of the ones I've tried and didn't like. Some of the ones I've honestly, you could say, confiscated off of people because they came out with the wrong holster and I would not let them go out on the range. And they ended up using this because they had a Glock. All right, don't. Again, if you can do this with your holster and it just flip flops around and you can sit and ball it up, probably put it in your pocket, this is not, not, not a holster you need to use. Don't cheat your way into a damn holster. Average holster should be somewhere between 75 to 150 bucks. Now, you can get a little bit more expensive depending on if you're going to have a flashlight, optics, all right, things like that, okay, or if you're going to get custom with it. You can get custom leather holsters. Um, you can get them snake skin, alligator skin, all kind of stuff. So you're just going to get a little bit more expensive. Again, average, 75 to 150 bucks. Now, with your mag pouches, all right, these are what's called, a lot of people call these tacos um, because they kind of look like a taco. They're universal, so you got your strap where you can tighten it all right, or loosen it down here, and that'll open it up depending on what magazine you're carrying. So they are universal. I can get AR mags, AK mags, Mini 14 mags, uh, FNAR 308 mags all down into the same magazine pouch. Um, this has molly attachments, so it's made more for plate carrier like you see back here behind me um, or belt, a uh, battle belt, duty belt depending on what you're using. I mean you could use it on a EDC belt if you had to uh, but this is more for molly attachments and things like that. You got them in pistols so you got rifles and pistols. Um, again this has molly attachments I use it on belts. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this is actually from Core. Uh, I'm getting ready to change my belt setup, so these are going to be going on there, and I will be testing them out. Uh, I have training learn coming up, so we're going to get a good test out of these mag pouches to see how they are. They're kind of similar to the G code that I, that I was just holding up. They're called tacos. All right, and they can pretty much be universal, single stack, double stack, whatever. So these are really good, I would say, for concealed carry. Uh, these are from a company called Pitbull Tactical. Got your little belt, goes over the belt here. You can actually carry these inside or outside the waistband. Um, this rubber piece is replaceable, so if it wears out, you can order another one. And these are also single stack or double stack, so you can use, uh, you could say they're universal. And you could put them in your pocket if you wanted to, um, but these are really, really good, I would say, for Concealment G code still has some good concealment mag pouches. Other companies have good ones. I've just liked these since I've started using them. I always keep extras on hand just in case somebody uh, needs to use a mag pouch or anything like that. So there's your holsters, there's your mag pouches. I'm not going to sp spend a lot of time on each little intricacies of each little holster. I just wanted to touch on this because make sure you're having the right holster when you're carrying whether it's concealed or open and depending on your state all right so look at your state laws all right i don't really think any state has laws around what holsters you can and can't use i could be wrong double check me on that depending on your state for south carolina here and i pretty much north carolina georgia tennessee all the surrounding states here there's no actual law saying you have to carry this particular holster or that particular holster. All right. The main thing is just use some common sense when you're carrying. Be responsible. All right. That's what this is all about: is being responsible. If I'm going to open carry, not how I want to carry, but I do it some. I've seen more people doing it. And I'm trying to get people 
in the area, in the state here, used to seeing people carrying guns openly because more and more people are doing it. But when I do, I carry with double retention. I've only done it a few times here or there. Okay, I haven't gone crazy with it. Most of the time I'm carrying concealed. I want the element of surprise. But just make sure you have the right holster. Don't cheat your way into it. 75 to 150 bucks on average. That is not unreasonable for a good holster that's going to protect your gun and protect you. So thank you for everybody for watching. Thanks for all the support. Please continue to like, share, subscribe, comment. All right, don't forget, you've got training learn coming up. So people in the industry, influencers, media, instructors, manufacturers, whatever, train and learn is coming up. No other choice, train and learn is coming up. I'll have a link somewhere up here, up here, I don't know. And it'll also be in the description if you want to get signed up. It is not too late. Two weeks away, one of the best events in the industry out there right now outside of probably SHOT Show. And I mean, it's just been tremendous. So if you're looking to get started or grow or just get deeper into the industry and network, this is the event that you want to be at. Please make sure you're there. If you need any gear for the event, while you're there at NoOtherChoice.com, use code SCGS5 to pick up holsters. Magpat, well, I'm sorry, I don't think he has holsters yet. He might can get them, reach out to him if you don't see him. Mag pouches, magazines, flashlights. All right, he's getting ready to expand, so get over there and check it out. Use my promo code. And if you want any sweet little swag, like a shirt I've got on here, you can also use my promo code and pick you up some nice swag. He's got some other great shirts, pullovers, hats, beanies, all kind of stuff. All right, don't forget about Core if you need a good belt. Get over to Core Essential. Use my code SCGS10. Pick up your battle belt, everyday carry belt, whatever that you need. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just record?